Hi, this is the first of my video diaries for the Police and Crime Commissioner elections being held here in Northamptonshire. I just wanted to make a few extra videos in the run up to the election itself just to explain a little bit more about how the campaign's going and also answer any additional questions that have come in. Um, it's also good to know what we've been up to in terms of sort of hustings and events and things like that. So last night uh, I attended the voluntary and community sector hustings which was hosted by the Northamptonshire Rights and Equality Council that was in Northampton at the Guildhall and um, it was basically organised within two different sections the first part being a sort of a, a group session it was very small groups and um, that included people from Neighbourhood Watch, Groundworks and independent advisory groups along with other organisations and representatives of voluntary and community groups. It was basically a question and answer session um, the usual things, why do we want to be Police and Crime Commissioner, what do we envisage the role will be, how will we achieve what we want to achieve etc. So that was very productive and um, it was certainly great to hear from, from those people and get their insights into what they do in the community and also to try and set back any fears they may have because obviously with there being a new Police and Crime Commissioner coming in there is a chance that funding could stop or be changed and, and what have you. So. In my mind, if something's not broken, don't fix it. And I think it's important to obviously understand what the groups that are currently being funded by the Police and Crime Commissioner's Office do, how they do it and how effective it is. And last night was part of that process. The second part of the hustings was more of a question time style event where we were each given five minutes to do a speech. And then we had questions put to us, which we all individually answered. Um, I'm not going to go into all of the questions that were asked at the event. Um, I do believe they're going to put it online individually. So if anybody wants to watch that or listen to it, I think it's an audio one only, um, they can certainly do that. I will post the link on my Facebook page and Twitter once I know what it is. But um, there were a few points that I wanted to, to sort of mention and, and to elaborate on, really. Um, the first of which was from Stephen Mould, the Conservative candidate, who bizarrely in my mind had a, a rather strange solution to the situation regarding Wootton Hall and it being sold off to be a school. He basically said if elected what he would do is build a brand new headquarters in the field next to the existing headquarters. Now it might just be me but that seems a little bit of a, a waste of money um, to effectively build a brand new building next to a building you've already got for exactly the same purpose. Um, I, I can't quite work out the, the thinking behind that. Very bizarre, but um, yeah, that's something we need to look at. The Labour candidate, Kevin McKeever, um, his main sort of thing that he's pushing really with his election is that he will save Wharton Hall. Um, that's not gonna happen, you know, unfortunately for Kevin, um, some of us have been on the campaign trail now for months and Kevin hasn't been around, he hasn't appeared and that included attending two briefings, uh, very important briefings, one with the Police and Crime Commissioner's Office and one with the police themselves and from those meetings unfortunately it's clear that by the time the next Police and Crime Commissioner is elected and is in office it's all the, the deal was done and dusted, you know the, the school will be there, there are pupils booked in already, there are staff being taken on already, um, it, it's a done deal and we may not agree with that deal and personally I think you know the people of Northamptonshire could have done a lot better and I think there is scope to have sort of saved Wootton Hall but it, it's not going to happen you know and we need to accept that and move on and look towards the future. So it's interesting that the two takes really on the, the sort of situation with Wooden Hall. Um, the other issue that sort of came up was with Kevin McKeever as well. Um, he made one comment at the Hustings last night that the police shouldn't run the police. Um, and I, I'm guessing that's a direct comment towards myself being a, a former police officer. Now, I did just under two years in the police and I left for a range of reasons. Um, but one of the main reasons was the frustration at the role. Um, excuse the cliche but I joined to make a difference I wanted to help people and that's what I want to do now and I found as a police officer in the Metropolitan Police that my hands felt tied you know there's a lot of red tape and paperwork um, but the, 
one of the biggest things that really frustrated me was you would deal with an incident and sometimes it was quite a nasty incident and you'd go through the process of obviously booking the offender in, doing the paperwork, getting the statements, building the evidence, building the case and you would then go to the CPS, the Crown Prosecution Service, which at that time had an officer based in the police station and you would sort of present them with your case and hope that they were sort of going to take it and move it forward. Most of the time they said no, nope, it's not in the public interest, not interested. And that was it, gone. And as you can imagine, when you've dealt with something and you, you've, you've sort of physically been injured because of it or somebody else has been injured or hurt, to be then told, no, all that work you've done, there's not enough there, it's not worth it, is, is very disheartening. And um, I would argue that, uh, I mean, Mr McKeever is himself a trained lawyer. Um, in my mind, it's not the police that scupper the, the process of justice, it was the Crown Prosecution Service, it's, it's lawyers who, you know, I'm sure they've got reasons and there's sort of practicalities of jails being full and things like that, but they were the ones that, for me, felt like they were stopping the justice process, which I didn't think was fair to the victims. So it's interesting that a lawyer would say the police shouldn't run the police. Um, like I said, I, I've done less than two years, I'm not exactly institutionalised as a police officer, um, I have that experience, which is more than the other two candidates have, um, but my my heart's with helping people, it's not with this sort of sense of you help your buddies in the police. I didn't work for Northamptonshire Police, um, you know, I wasn't in long enough to be indoctrinated into the sort of the, the lifestyle of the police. Um, so yeah, I think that was a bit of a mute point really. The other issue he raised, um, which which I found very interesting and worrying, um, I think the the problem is with this point, and what it was 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 Kevin McKeever basically said that to fund the police going forward, he would raise the precept that people pay. So effectively, taxpayers would have an an increase to their council tax for the section that goes to the police and crime commissioner. Um, above the 2% that is allowed without a referendum. And he made it quite clear that he would hold a referendum um, to push the precept up further than 2%. <sighs> Problem with Labour is they have this reputation, unfortunately, with the economy. Um, true or not, you know, I'm not one to judge, but it's felt that they are the people responsible for messing up the economy. You know, they borrowed and borrowed and borrowed, sold off the gold reserves, did this, did that, and got us into the situation where we had the economic crash and now we're having to go through a period of austerity because of that. Now they would argue that it wasn't their fault, naturally, um, the Conservatives would say it was their fault. However, the perception generally is that Labour got us into that situation. And here we are with a Labour candidate who is effectively saying, rather than looking at what we've got and thinking outside the box, I'm going to raise money by making the taxpayer pay more. Now, I'm not aware so far of any referendum that has been held to raise the precept above 2% where it's actually been passed because people, they're not going to vote to pay more money. That's a strange concept for me that he's he's gone down that road because I think that will alienate him with the voters. People want police and they don't mind to a degree paying for the police but they want to see them, they want to have them out there on the streets and we've seen increases in the precept in the past including recently yet we don't seem to see any difference actually on our streets so to go to the public and say look I need to take even more money from you in order to get more police on the streets I don't think it's going to go down very well so I think it's time to accept that that's a bad idea and we need to look at innovative ways to make money. We need to cut drastically the spending of the Police and Crime Commissioner's office, which at one point was £1.4 million a year on staffing alone. Now, arguably, the staffing has been cut in recent times, but there's still more we can do. You know, I would rather see money going into frontline policing and frontline crime reduction than paying staff, which maybe we don't need. Um, I'm the only candidate that has stated that I won't take the full salary package because, again, I want to be able to put money back into the front line. So, there were my points with um, with both the Conservative and the Labour candidates last night. 
Um, the other issue which came up was to do with Neighbourhood Watch and there was a chap there um, last night who's given over 20 years of his time and efforts to the Neighbourhood Watch scheme in his area and he was concerned that funding is, is an issue. And basically he's at the point now where he claims state pension and he said, look, you know, I do all this work for Neighbourhood Watch. I don't want anything for it, but I shouldn't really be out of pocket with expenses. And basically I sort of said, well, you know, don't mind me asking, what are your expenses? And he said around about £20 a month. And in the grand scheme of things, that, that's nothing. You know, Neighbourhood Watch has been with us for absolutely years. You know, it's a, a fundamental part of the relationship between the police and the community. And the, those that give their time for Neighbourhood Watch have, have done a fantastic job. And here's somebody with over 20 years of doing this for us and helping our police and communities thinking I'm going to have to give it up because I can't afford to pay my own expenses every month. That's ridiculous, you know, and, and I fully, fully give my support to the Neighbourhood Watch Scheme and that is something going forward that I will continue to give. Um, the other issue that came up was we were asked um, a question regarding the Office of Faith-Based Initiatives and basically it was sort of asked, is that going to be kept? Now, my honest answer is no, no it won't be kept. And the reason behind that is I think we need to be careful of putting different groups and sections of the community and banding them together and alienating them from everybody else. In my mind, we have one big table where we all sit around together as a community, um, regardless of faith, religion, ethnicity, whatever it may be, we're all one community. We need to work together. And we can't do that if we've got individual groups that don't represent everybody. So I would get rid of the Office of Faith-Based Initiatives, a bit of a mouthful, um, but it doesn't mean it's being scrapped or the, the concept and talking to those that are involved with it um, goes. It just means we open it up to everybody so that everybody's got an equal say in how our policing resources are used and put into the community. The final point I'll make um, is with regards to the fire service. Now there's a lot of people asking questions about this. Um, I do not want to see a merger between the police and the fire service on the front line. I don't think it's going to work. I think it's a bad idea. I think the fire service do a fantastic job. The police service do a fantastic job. Both individually, they're perfectly fine as they are. You know, they always work in partnership when they need to. Why change that? Again, if it's not broken, don't fix it. There is scope, obviously, to do things behind the scenes. So um, I don't like to use this term, but the sort of the back office element, um, procurement, HR, uh, maybe even the control room. You know, maybe that's a way of, of keeping it in Northamptonshire because there is talk of losing our control room to another county. However, if we can work together with the fire brigade in terms of the sort of the background things, fantastic, because that saves money for both services and we can then put that back into frontline services. But as for a merger with Frontline, no way, not going to happen, not in my term. So um, hopefully that alleviates some of the questions that you guys have. Thank you for watching this video. I will be doing a few more in the run up to the election itself. If you would like any more information and you'd like to contact me with any questions that you may have, please feel free to visit my website, which is samwatts.net. Uh, there's details there, such as my phone number, email address, and also how to contact me on social media. So thank you very much for watching and I'll speak to you soon. Cheers.